Tensions between China and Taiwan are heating up. China claims sovereignty over the small island and has stepped up military activities in the air and waters around it. Taiwan is determined to resist the pressure and demands China back off. The saber rattling also has economic implications. Taiwan is a major source of computer chips for the global economy. The world would grind to a halt without Taiwan's computer chips. They're inside TVs, smartphones, computers. The globe's producers rely on the small island's electronic component supplies. Most deliveries go to China, which regards Taiwan as a breakaway province under its One China policy. But recently tensions in Taiwan Strait have reached heights not seen in years. On Tuesday, the island's president, Tsai Ing-wen, inspected an air force base. A clear message addressed to Beijing. We have to deal with the provocation of People's Liberation Army fighter jets surrounding Taiwan and disturbing the peace. The situation makes air defense duty in Penghu Air Base more difficult. But I have faith in every individual that every one of our well-trained Air Force brothers and sisters can carry this heavy responsibility. The U.S. stands firmly behind Taiwan in its dispute with China, recently supplying it with sea mines, drones and air-to-ground missiles worth $7 billion. That's partly because Taiwan is such a global trade heavyweight. Alongside South Korea and Japan, it's a mainstay of world microchip production, making it strategically important for Western economies. Besides that, though, Taiwan is a functioning democracy. That makes it a thorn in the side of Beijing, because it is living proof to Chinese people that there are other successful political systems in the region. And for more, let's bring in our correspondent in Taipei, Tsung Han Tsu. And uh, here in the studio with me, my colleague and China expert Clifford Kunin. And Clifford, I'd like to start with you because uh, what we see here, do you think that Taiwan could be a, a second Hong Kong? What is China after? Well, I think the short answer is yes, it could become another Hong Kong. Um, what we've seen with the national security law in Hong Kong is kind of a blueprint almost for what could happen in Hong Kong for... Uh, sorry, in Taiwan. For a long time, um, the Chinese government was playing a very, um, was a conciliatory role uh, trying to woo Taiwan, um, and that hasn't worked. Just as in Hong Kong, the, the two, two, one country, two systems model was held up as a model for, for Taiwan. But now we can see that it's, it's, there's a lot less carrot and a lot more stick. And of course, as you mentioned, all of this has been going on for quite some time, so the timing is quite interesting. We'll talk about that in a moment. But, Sue, um, I mean, the one thing is the military tension, uh, but what are the implications for the economy? How important is China for the Taiwanese economy, both as a business and trading partner? Well, China is Taiwan's number one trading partner, and Taiwan's exports are highly dependent on China. The percentage of goods um, to um, China, Hong Kong, and Macau rose from 37 percent in January to almost 45 percent in July. So um, that's what makes Taiwan a economic growth the first among the four Asian tigers, that's um, Hong Kong, Korea, and uh, Singapore. And it's really hard for Taiwan not to depend on China right now because China is probably the first country to recover from the pandemic. But experts believe that the threats of war from China will further push Taiwan to the U.S. Uh, that, that's also an interesting point, uh, and that maybe that is what investors are betting on, because uh, when I was looking at the markets, Taiwanese shares were down, but nothing dramatic. On the other hand, we saw the Taiwanese dollars reach a seven-year high. Uh, are investors spooked? How is all this connected? Well, it's probably odd and sad to say that Taiwanese people are used to it. Um, the threat has been there for more than 70 years. And there were times when tension was really high and China fired missiles at the sea near Taiwan. But this time, at least until now, only war plans have flown close to Taiwan. So uh, the market is still stable, currency stable, and the housing prices are still very high. All right. Uh, Tsung, uh, thank you. Uh, very much. Tsung Han Su in uh, Taipei. I have one more question for Clifford. And uh, uh, Su already mentioned how Taiwan is now drifting closer to the US. Uh, what's the role of the US here? Uh, we do know about this big arms deal that's, that's going on. Uh, is, is Taiwan going to be a pawn in the US-China trade war? Fill us in, please. 
Well, I think it, it, it's certainly a player in the, in the trade war in that it's, <clears throat> it's benefited very much from uh, the fact that um, there's restrictions on trade with China um, and the microchips have been a particular recipient of that. Um, the US has vowed to protect China if there is a conflict. Um, that promise was made 70 years ago, as, as Sung Ha mentioned, but, um, but increasingly under Trump there's a sign that it could do. So we're entering a very a phase where the geopolitical dynamics of what's happening in the region, and it's always been a flashpoint in the region, um, are also taking on very strong economic uh, um, tones. And so going forward, um, we could see the US showing much more support for Taiwan, and that would have um, big implications for, for, for the economy in the region. Well, and with about half a minute to go, just very briefly, Clifford, do we have to be worried now about our computer chip supplies? Well, I think um, the fact that Taiwan is such a big player in the chip, global chip uh, market that it's able to, and it's able to move things incredibly quickly. So I think that it has, um, it, it, I think for the time being, we're probably safe, but it's always, it's something we're going to be watching very, very closely. All right. Clifford Coonan, uh, as always, thank you so much for your time and your expertise.